Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. Man, I can't even think back in time to when there's been two more imposing figures that have matched up in the sport of boxing. I mean, this is like the NBA in the 90s when you had guys like Shaquille O'Neal exiting with guys like Karl Malone. This is like putting gloves on those guys and letting them go fisticuffs. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you insight from the inside out of what this fight will look like when they're matched up. And you know what else we're gonna do this time? We're gonna give you the punch logistics, the punch comparisons from the two in their past fights to see how they match up. This usually helps those who are out there and they're on that betting tip. So, but before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. For those of you who have never watched this channel, shame on you. My name is Eric A. Bradley, AKA The Real Fight Doctor, and there is no other on this level. Back to the topic at hand. Tyson Fury, one of the most slick, tall fighters with a lot of bravado and verbal cachet than anybody that you've seen in the sport outside of guys like Muhammad Ali, Conor McGregor, and the UFC, who just had the slick tongue and can get up under your skin. One of the things that are so important about this fight, you pay close attention. When you see personalities like the Bronze Bomber surface outside of their normal scenarios, you know you got a problem. So let's see if Tyson Fury has what it takes to put this fire out. But before we get going, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over some of the punch stats from all of these guys' past fights, their averages. If you stay with me right here, you can kinda take what I'm about to give you right now and you can make a case for who you already think will win this fight. No matter who you feel or like personally, before this is over, this segment will give you insight to who has the best chance of winning this fight, bar none. Now, as you look over here, what you're gonna see right here is what they land per round. You're gonna have Deontay Wilder is landing at 17.6 punches a round. Tyson Fury is landing 13. Now, you go to the punches thrown, and Deontay Wilder is throwing 41.1 per round. Now this is the averages from all of their past fights. And Tyson Fury is throwing 50.9, which shows that he's much more busy, but landing simply at a lower punch percentage. Now the connect percentage for Deontay Wilder is 42.8%. That's pretty decent. Tyson Fury is connecting at 25.5%. Now you have to kind of look at that and say, all right, well, Tyson Fury kind of throws a lot of setup punches, so with that being said, that kind of speaks the language of why that is the case. So, as we go back over here, you take another look. Jabs per round, which during a fight of this magnitude, the jab will be very important. So, let's see who has the most jabs. Jab per round, 8.64 Deontay Wilder, 4.5 for Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury will have to throw more jabs to throw Deontay Wilder's rhythm off. So he has to crank that number up. These are the numbers that tell the truth about the game and what has to happen during camp. Now, power shots. Power shots, of course. It's obvious that Deontay Wilder may throw more, but that's not always the case. Power shots are simply punches outside of the jab. It can be a short, soft right hand. They just all count as power shots, left hook, body shot, boom, bam. But in all lessons, Deontay Wilder is landing nine power shots per round. For a guy with that kind of power, that's a lot. Tyson Fury is landing 8.4. So hopefully he'll pick his spots to land the right shots at the right time. He has a high IQ, so I'm sure this is part of his plan. It's not about how many you land, it's the ones that make the most impact. That's important. Now I want you guys to stay tuned because what we're about to show you is we're gonna take it from the punch percentages, landing percentages, 
punches per round to what it looks like inside of the ring. Coach Bradley is going to break it down for a quick segment of the style matchup. All right. Well, this is one of the things that I know for sure that can be an option for the two big giants in the ring. First, Tyson Fury. He has to take advantage of Deontay Wilder's long, extended right hand. Now, his wingspan, like I said, is, is, is absolutely astronomical. So you have to learn to use that against him. So, Tyson's a selfie. He's a cutie. He moves, so he has to use his angles. So when he sees that right hand, he has to bait him with the jab. And when he sees the right hand, he has to be willing to go into the lion's den pop. And keep him off balance, get between the shoulder blade and in his armpit. And work from the inside, staying outside, away from that long, powerful right hand in order to take that victory that night. He must implement taking a chance to get inside of that collarbone and which he can do because he has the talent. Now Deontay Wilder with the long right hand. One of the things that I have written in a book about how to deal with all different styles, especially the cutie. Tyson is a super cutie and in order to take advantage of a cutie, one of the things you must be willing to do is do the step outside, not, ta not target the head, but target the chest. So when Tyson Fury decides to flail his punches, he can go here and he can sidestep and he can go straight for the chest, boom, right hand, he can get the KO that way. Several options, so just watch his footwork, bam. And good night. You cannot hit a cutie directly to the face. You must have tactics of sidestepping and straight shots to the chest. Most of the time, guys who have cutie styles will bend into your punch. So you got to keep it simple, be smart, attack, and find a way to land that crack. We out of here. Coach Bradley here and the Wild Prince. Enjoy the fight. Back to you. Peace. My survival. Wow. Now that gives you insight. Sometimes we see little demonstrations and when experts break it down, it really opens your eyes. So with that being said, that gave me full clarity on how this fight can potentially take shape. So that was my dedication and donation to the sport. And I'm glad you guys continue to watch tens of millions of views later. I'm still doing it, and I thank you guys for taking the time out to share these moments with me. Until the next time, like I said, if you like the video and you appreciate what we're doing out here in social media, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, like the page, tag someone who you think would like to see it, and make sure you tune in as we go in and chop it up after the fight. I love to chop it up with you guys. Until next time, be blessed at Godspeed. Peace. Let's go!